Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. A lot of Americans, as you can tell, are concerned about whether or not their kids are going to go back to the traditional bricks and mortar government run schools. Many of those government run schools are failing the kids even before China virus arrived on our shores. And so they're looking for alternatives. And I think in in some ways, if there is a silver lining to the China virus pandemic and its effect on public education, it's that it's forcing the system to afford some kinds of choices or As they say, necessity is the mother of invention. It forces parents to look around and say, if the schools can't deliver the kind of education that my child needs, what can I do to figure out an alternative? Now, of course, there's online, there is charter, uh, there are private schools that will still operate. um, And then there are pandemic pods, which I had never heard about until I read the piece by Lindsay Burke, Dr. Lindsay Burke, who's director of the Center for Education Policy at Heritage. Dr. Burke, welcome back. Thank you for having me. So uh, let's give people the definition of what a pandemic pod is, because it might bring to mind some large plastic egg-shaped thing that we all call, <laughs> crawl into, like a hurricane shelter or something like that. But it's not. It's, it's a pod of parents and children? Yeah, thankfully it's not that. So this is parents banding together to form these education pods or pandemic pods, basically pooling together their resources in a neighborhood They might group their children together at different ages within a neighborhood. And then they basically sort of co-quarantine the kids together in clusters. And then they hire a teacher or a private tutor and just pay that teacher directly for instruction. And, I mean, it really is amazing because, to me, what we're seeing in response to schools, district government-run schools being closed, is civil society in action. And it is really just a beautiful thing to see. So I'm wondering, only because the nuts and bolts kind of fascinate me, What if you went out on the marketplace right now, I guess, depending on where you are in America, what what might it cost you to hire a decent, say, kindergarten through fifth or or sixth or seventh grade teacher who can kind of do it all for all those ages? How much per year would you have to put out to get a good teacher? So it ranges. And what we've seen so far is that when these uh, pods pull together their resources, that Families, it looks like, are putting in about anywhere between 500 and maybe $1,000 per child per month. Uh, but what I've seen so far is around $500 per kid that they're putting in per month. And so this is something that uh, certainly if you're a low-income family and for many middle-income uh, families as well, that's, that's difficult to do. And that's why we really need to make sure that policy catches up with what parents are doing and allow dollars to follow children to education options of choice, including things like education pods. I like that idea, and and especially because uh, I've advocated for school choice, for vouchers, and all the rest of that. And all along, in fact, we've been asking uh, poll questions from time to time. If if the, the bricks and mortar schools can't operate, should the resources go to the parents? Whether the parents want to spend them on you know uh, connection style online education, a charter school, a private school with some of their own money, or this kind of situation where. Because I was guessing fifty, sixty, seventy thousand a year to hire a teacher with benefits and everything else, uh, and then say, okay, we're going to divide this among ten, fifteen, twenty kids. Is that about the metric right. and the way it works? That's exactly how it's working. Yeah, I've seen anywhere from six kids to maybe twelve kids or so. Uh, but yeah, upwards of, of twenty certainly within a neighborhood. And we've even heard some stories about neighborhoods pooling their resources together and putting aside some money to sponsor a child, a low-income student from a neighborhood nearby to join their pod as well. So that, I think, is another really good illustration of how civil society is stepping up to provide in this moment. And now, does that mean that the, the, the group just looks around and says, okay, who has the biggest house or has the biggest single room in a house? Or, or do they take over the garage? Or is, I mean, because that's part of the practical side of it, too. Who has room right. for a, a classroom of even 10 or 15 kids? How does it yeah, work? Yeah, that's right. Or do it outside. So we're seeing a lot of this move outside as well. We're also seeing uh, groups of students move around from home to home. So it might not just be one home that has to have a dedicated place for students. So yeah, it's certainly a matter of uh, matching up uh, those pods with spaces that are the right fit. And what's amazing to me, too, is that if you follow any of this, we have seen on places like Facebook, for instance, that these pandemic pod groups are popping up that you can follow on Facebook, and they have tens of thousands of people who have joined as members, even though these groups just popped up a few days ago. 
And so we see this great exchange of information between parents. And not only that, but these groups are also having sign-up sheets for people who are tutors and teachers. And so then they're matching the teachers and the tutors with different pod groups across the country. And it really is just an amazing response to see. And I would say, too, paradoxically, (laughs) the teachers' union have actually enabled some of this to happen because their reticence or uh, just standing in the way, I suppose, of schools reopening in places like Los Angeles, where they have this liberal wish list that they want to see fulfilled before they bless school reopening. Parents have said, well, we're not going to wait. We're going to do whatever we have to do to make sure that our children have access to a quality education. Well, I, I think it's a terrific idea. Uh, does that also answer, and I'll tell you something, uh, Dr. Burke, if there's one thing that's irritated me the most about the last se- several months of listening to the pronouncements of politicians on this is they talk about ed- education, and the first thing they mention is the child care aspect and the food aspect. And I thought that seems to me like choosing your college based on whether they have the best tailgate parties or not. I, I thought education was about education and not about lunch and child care, although I know from a practical standpoint for parents, you know, especially kids kindergarten through about, uh, what, 14 or so, maybe 13, you don't want them home alone by themselves. So I get that. Uh, it's got that aspect, but this would answer that as well, because if they're having class at Mrs. Jones's house today, then at, when the teacher goes home, uh, the kids just say, okay, you're going to hang out here at Mrs. Jones's house, and she's got to provide snacks until all the parents come by and pick the kids up. Is that, is that the right. way it works, or do they tend to be more neighborhood? exactly right. Yep, that's exactly right. And we're even seeing this with preschool age students as well. So that child care function, it is, I am 100% with you when we think about education. I think what most of us really consider first and foremost is that academic component. But there is certainly a child care component to it, and that is certainly a part of economic recovery. And so thinking about the ways in which that can also, this pod idea can also support the sort of child care function, for lack of a better word, is important. But we're already seeing that push down, particularly to the earliest years, things like micro schools and cottage classes, which are sort of part and parcel of the pod idea, too. Well, I've got another idea for you, and I don't know whether the education establishment will welcome this. But when you talked about this and you say the dollar should follow and all of a sudden we're thinking vouchers and changes in laws and all that. If a local school district said, look, we can't have all these kids in the classroom at the same time that we typically would. So but but a parent group came in and said, look, we need one teacher. We'll take care of 15 of the kids. And uh, the and the education establishment, if they're honest, we're spending, I think, in America around eleven or twelve thousand dollars per student per year. So the educated education, education administrator, if he looks at his spreadsheet, he says, let's see, a teacher's salary and benefits cost me around one hundred grand. Uh, the kids account for about one hundred and fifty grand in resources. So I get one hundred and fifty in for these kids. If I send a teacher to that neighborhood and, and provide the pod teacher, I've got 150 coming in, but I've only got 100 in cost going out, um, and I've cleared some space in classrooms. This could actually work out if school administrators were willing to think out of the box. Do we have those people who will do that? Right, and that's that's the $64,000 question. Will they think outside of the box, and will policy actually catch up? And this is, I think, a big part of the reason why it's been so difficult with the pandemic to really nail down this question of school reopening is that we have historically for more than 100 years funded physical school buildings instead of students and so as a result we have an education financing system that is the opposite of nimble and so when things like this happen (laughs) it is very difficult to be quick on your feet but you're exactly right look we have a huge administrative bloat problem in Let, let's let's see well. if we can take care of that. Dr. Burke's piece can be found at Daily Signal. She's with the Center for Education Policy at Heritage. Dr. Burke, thank you very much. Coming up, if colleges decide to go online, and a lot of them are, do the students deserve a cut in tuition? We'll talk about it next. 